Wow, it is Wednesday and so good to be here with you. So how are you doing? How are things in your neck of the woods? It's a beautiful Wednesday I have here. I actually was able to go for my walk today. I mean, having 18 degrees Celsius, this is, yay, amazing weather. Beautiful, beautiful day. I pray that your weather is just as lovely. And even if it's not, that you had reason today to rejoice. That The fact that you're well, that you're safe, that you're healthy, that those you love are probably around you and that you are surrounded with that love and appreciation. You know, that's good. That's something to rejoice about. And I would encourage you today to find something positive to rejoice about. Anything. Look for what we call the kernel of truth. Look for something positive and meaningful. Maybe it's your health today and your well. That's something to rejoice about. Maybe it's that you're able to eat well today. You've put food on your table and you've been able to feed your family. That's something to rejoice about. So maybe you talked with a friend that you haven't spoken with for so long and you still have friendship. That's something to rejoice about. And maybe you still have faith. If you're a person of faith, that's something to rejoice about. So if you're here today, you don't know what we do here. If this is your first time, welcome to Karen Althea Ministries. I'm Karen Althea. This is what we do every Wednesday at 4.30 Eastern time. And so as we're on um, this particular schedule, it may be different from yours, but we're on the Eastern daylight time right now. And so catch us at 4.30 on the Eastern time every Wednesday right here. All we do here is just to encourage you. We share a word um, of encouragement from the Holy Scriptures and we empower each other in the Lord. We encourage each other, we motivate you, we kind of help you. It's like a little fuel that we encourage you to get here, to stop, fill up, be motivated for the remainder of the week or for the week till we meet again. But we want you to know that you're not alone. Right. We want you to know that you're not the only person experiencing what you're experiencing. And when it's a bubbly day, we have some of those days. And when those are the down days and feeling like it's not happening today, we all have some of those days. So you're not alone. So this is a place for you to be. Welcome. Hi, Janice. Yes, I know you're an hour behind now, and um, but the weather is lovely. Yay. Uh, awesome. And I'm glad that you are grateful. I see some of those wonderful, grateful um, posts that you have as well. Welcome, everyone, all of you behind the scene. Welcome. I don't always see everybody popping up as, as yet on, the, um, on my camera in terms of seeing, seeing that in my feed. But welcome, you know that you are loved right here. Every single one of you um, that you stop in, that you take the time. I'm so honored that you do that, that, you know, there's so many things we can scroll and pass on Facebook and, and any other um, social media platform. But when you stop in here, um, just to chat with me, just to listen, just to share, I am grateful for you. I am blessed because of you being here. So. That's part of my gratefulness today. My gratitude is you. So thank you for being here. And we're going to be sharing from the word today uh, from Romans chapter 8. But I want to know how are you doing? Yes, you are having great weather too. Good to know, Janice. That's amazing. Uh, I pray that all is well for all of you on. Today, I want to remind you that you can breathe. Breathe. Your fate is resolved. Just breathe. You know, often we feel condemned and, and we are crippled and feel bound sometimes by some of the circumstances um, of condemnation that come around us. And today I want to remind someone that Jesus is that bridge. He's our bridge to hope. He's our bridge that relieves us and resolves those moments of, of, of faithful dilemma that we many times experience. So Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Those who are familiar with scripture, with the Holy Bible, some, some of you, we all know that by heart. Um, and we can quote that verse. So I want to share that with you. If you're using your app on your phone, your iPad, whatever it is, the good old version of the Bible, that's fine. Romans chapter 8, just one verse we're going to look at today. Hi, Carrie. Good to have you. It's been a while. So good to see you, girl. Um, thanks for being here. Others of you, again, it takes time to show up on my 
um, my camera for me to see you, but you know you're welcomed here. This is this is the place. I love to have you. You're welcome. Like, um, type in the chat. Say hello to us. Say something when it resonates with you. And if you know others who are interested in being motivated and encouraged in the word, but maybe they're not on Facebook, I encourage you to have them hop over to YouTube. Everybody can search for YouTube and search for Karen Althea Ministries and you'll find the same videos uploaded. I just upload them there that others who are not on Facebook can have access to that as well so they can be encouraged. So that is there. I want to also remind you that tomorrow night, Thursday night at 6.30 Eastern Time, you can join us for Bible studies at the Haven of Healing Ministries. Easy, chill informal Bible study. You don't need to be afraid um, to join us online. If you go to havenofhealingministries.com, if you type that in your search engine um, on your, on your um, you know, computer, whatever electronic device you use, and you find that you can log in from that page right there on the website. For Thursdays at 6.30, we have a Bible study. We encourage you to join. We just read the word, the raw word, and we all, we have children there. We have older adults. We have middle age. We're all there as one family, small, intimate group. And we just share the word. We expound. We, are, we encourage um, our spirits in the Lord, in the word of the Lord. And we grow. Above all, we're growing in the word. It is reading the word of God daily. And we're growing in that. And it's a beautiful place to be. So I invite you to be there with me tomorrow night. Again, havenofhealingministries.com. And you can find the link. Or if you have my DM me, send me a personal message and I'll send you the link directly um, right here from Facebook or Messenger or whatever access you have to me. Any of my sites, feel free to send me a direct message and I'll send you the link. I also invite you if you cannot make it on Thursday or maybe even if you can, but invite you again in the healing room on Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. We are excited about what God is doing. We're excited about the fact that people need the Lord and we want to be part of that. And, and I want to tell you, there's a place at the table for you. If you're excited about what God has done in your life and you want to also minister to other people, come to the healing room on Saturday at 7 p.m. Join us. There's a place in that ministry for you. This is a new ministry we've launched a month and we are, we are excited um, about winning souls for God. We're excited about um, redefining how we present the gospel of Christ to others um, because we believe that every lost soul needs Jesus. And so if you want to be a part of that, we do that on Saturdays at 7 p.m. Looking forward to seeing you in the healing room. You can enter the healing room from the same link on the website. It's right there. And you can also private message me. I'll send you the links directly if you want to be a part of that as well. So those are my announcements. And check it out on YouTube as well, Karen Alfie Ministries, for all the videos you've missed. One more announcement. This Sunday is a wellness session again. And this is the fourth Sunday in March. We're talking about bipolar. So I want to remember we, I'm having a guest on who will share lived experience with bipolar. So I invite you to be there this Sunday at 5 p.m. Again, the flyer, the link will be on my Facebook page. And I'll see you guys for our monthly wellness Zoom session. And maybe you're curious, maybe you've heard about it, maybe you're struggling with some of those symptoms of bipolar, or you know someone who is. Um, that's the place to be this Sunday. So you see, I'm inviting you Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, keeping you active in what we do and making certain you're not alone. Don't feel isolated and withdraw yourself. You're not alone. We want you there. All right. So today we are on Romans 8 verse 1. So welcome everybody who came up after. Hi, Sister Juliet. I see you. Yes, Carrie, you've been extremely busy. Girl, we know how that is. We pray your strength. And pray that God's grace will continue to undergird you um, for sure. So Romans 8 verse 1. We often read that or we say, um, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And so, you know, I woke up thinking about this one morning for the fact that it is such a beautiful place to be in a space where 
you are no longer bound and crippled by condemnation. And so, you know, maybe many of you don't use that term anymore. Maybe we don't talk like that anymore to say we are condemned. But maybe you're at a place where you are experiencing a judgment. Condemnation is a judgment that is pronounced upon you. It is that judgment which means that you are separated from something that would bring you into a favorable position. Right. So if you feel condemned by friends, it means you no longer have favor with your friends. It means for some reason they sever the relationship or you have you don't find that you you have any a, a, a good side with them again. Or you feel like things you could do together the way you would talk together. It's like you're separated and you are shifted from your position has shifted from what you had before. It is a, it is a difficult place for anyone to be. For anybody who's ever experienced condemnation, judgment, it's a difficult place. It's a difficult place if you find yourself there. And I, I mean, if we were all in a room and I could ask you, I'm sure if I were to say, is there anyone right now listening to me who's ever, and you can type that in the chat, who've, who've ever felt condemned and judged and put down and written off and ridiculed, raise your hand. If we were in a room, you can raise your hand in the chat. You can drop it in the chat. And I would be the first to, to raise my hand, to have been judged and ridiculed and condemned and um even as it were, it's almost like you are rejected and put aside. Condemnation does that. Condemnation is a, it's like a punishment of being taken out of where you're at and being taken out of a place of favor. And you are thrown into this place where you're losing favor. You're losing favor with someone. You're losing favor with friends. You're losing favor sometimes with family. They've written you off. So it's like being written off and left to die. And it's a fateful dilemma to find yourself in that situation. It's a dilemma, a fateful one. It is, it is a painful place. And the Apostle Paul explains this well in this chapter in Romans 8. And what he was sharing is, is like the chasm that sin and shame brings to us. There's a separation. There's a gap. There's a wide gap. It's like a gulf of a gap. That sin separates us from our Heavenly Father. That shame and disgrace separate us from that which we can have. That favor, that life of favor and, and life of, of sonship and, and being heir to the kingdom of God. And, and so it is that place of condemnation. And that's what he's sharing here. The huge divide from God. But... With the arrival of Jesus Christ as our Messiah, there is now a bridge, a bridge of hope. And that's what the Apostle Paul wanted um, the Romans to know, the believers to know, that you may have been separated from your faith, from your Christ, from your family, from your walk with, with people or, or things you consider favorable. And there's a gap. And when you feel condemned in such a way you suffer feelings of hopelessness when people are condemned by their family or feel rejected by their family you feel that sense of hopelessness and helplessness and shame and guilt and and you literally feel like your hands are bound and there's no one to support you you feel all alone and isolated and many times that's how we feel Right. The term, the term literally in the original language literally means in the Greek that that it is to know something against, to know something against. And so when someone knows something against you, something that can hurt you, how does it make you feel? How does it make you feel? I can see that, Janice. I can relate. Yes, I can relate. And I know everybody listening on here today, you can relate in some way or the other. When someone knows something against you, not know something for you and in favor of you, against you. That's literally the meaning, kataginosko, knowing something against someone. 
and they use it against you. They can use it to, to, to think ill of you. They can use it to, to put you down. They can use it to make you lose your job, to make you lose your family. I mean, when someone knows something against you, it can be used in such evil and ill ways and painful and hurtful ways. And that's what the Apostle Paul wanted the believers to know, that there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Right? So they may know something against you, they may about you. They they may think evil of you because of that. And or ill, just maybe ill, just think poorly, badly of you. Um you know, and, and who we all mess up. We all mess up in in such ways. We sometimes we mess up big time. There is always something. Everybody has a little dark corner. Every single one of us. Don't be fooled. Don't let anybody fool you or make you feel like you are less than. Because everyone has their own demons in their own closets. You know, we all we all mess up. We all have those dark places in our lives. Whether whether it was deliberately caused by you or circumstances of life caused them around you, we all have those things, right? We 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 get there. We have things in our lives that we're not proud of. We're all a, a big mess at the end of the day, but for the grace of God. But for the grace of Almighty God. So you know, some of our messes may be bigger than others. It's like when you put out garbage. Those of us, whether you, you throw your garbage in the backyard or down in the banana, walk the plantation to, to form mulch and whatever else, or maybe like us in, in North America and other countries that, that you, um, you have to recycle and you save some for compost and, and you set them up. Separate. However the garbage is, it's still garbage. Whether it's a big bag, a small bag, um, you know, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it is something that we have to put out that we can no longer use. And some can be embarrassing. Sometimes when we look at that compost, it is smelly and it is messy and it, it stinks and it is hard to deal with. Sometimes our messes are like that. It's, it's not a lovely smelling savor to anyone. And so when someone knows that against you and can use it against you. Um, that's what condemnation is. That's what the enemy does. He uses all your sins, all the things in your past, all the mistakes you've made. Every time you've made a big boo-boo, he uses it. And that kind of feeling brings shame. And can I tell you, shame is a big time killer. It's a big time killer. Shame will hold you down. Shame will make you feel hopeless. Shame will keep you stuck. Shame will make you not able to move forward with your life. Because you are so embarrassed. You wonder how you will ever live out these public shame and moments of mess and distresses and, and just, just embarrassing situations. That's what sin does brings shame and disgrace and it's meant to just write us off it actually is meant to just kill us it's it's like a total write-off just finish you off but hear the word of god today that there is a condition the lord the, through the word through paul writing here and uh, it says that there's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in christ jesus He's the only one who can cover our sin and our shame and our disgrace. Who's the only one? Sometimes you go through some things and you wonder, how will I ever pick myself up? Wow. Sometimes you probably say, Karen, how, 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 will, I, how will you work this one through? How will you get out of this one? Places where you feel like you're so messed up that you can't even clean yourself up because this is too much. And, and, and you feel like you would run away and hide for the rest of your life in shame, guilt, and it, and it holds you and, and you can never achieve. You, you can't succeed because you are stuck. You are stuck with that shame. Every time you try to move forward, somebody will take it and they will tell you. Or you, you 
self-condemnation. You tell yourself. You remind yourself of those failures and those messes and, and you can't move forward. You keep telling yourself, I'm never, I'm no good. I'm never going to get there because I'm such a big mess. I am totally in over my head here. And we tell all ourselves, ourselves all kinds of um, condemning uh, things. And, and it further that which others have already done to us. But hear the word of God today. Even when you find it hard to forgive yourself. And, and you know, that's the hardest part. To forgive yourself. Sometimes all the mess up and so on, even others forgive you. People, the same people you thought wouldn't forgive you, they talk about it, nine day one, it's done, they forgive you, they move on. But you sometimes find it hardest to forgive yourself. And you live with that, you never move forward. You never achieve all those wonderful dreams you had as a young person, as a child, even in your early adulthood, you, you, you're just stuck in that face of your life of messing up condemning yourself but Jesus has come to resolve your fate to, to resolve to throw out your dilemma and to give you a new bridge of hope to build you to connect you to that place where he says there is no condemnation if you are in him He's taken that at the cross. He's, he's already taken that on and he forgives you and he, and in him and hear this for those who are in Christ, who walked according, who walk according to the spirit and not according to the flesh. So if, if that which you're doing is just for self aggrandizement, for, to, for the carnal man, for the flesh, to please man, to please yourself, then you are still walking in the flesh. And you're on your own with that. But if your motive is about just being where God wants you to be and, and your efforts to serve God with a whole heart, to walk in his spirit, to be true to all he's called you to be, even when you mess up, he knows you walk according to the spirit. You are in the will of God. You're in companionship with the spirit of God and he will relieve you from the fate of condemnation. Paul, who crucified, who, literally, he stoned, the Stephen the martyr was killed because Paul approved the men who stoned him to death because he was, he was persecuting Christians and he thought he was in the right. But when he met Jesus, when he came face to face with the Lord Jesus Christ, and was able to have been forgiven and to be relieved of that condemnation. You know, the Spirit of God is still alive and well and is here and available to relieve you of your condemnation. I don't know how messed up you've been. I don't know what you've done. And maybe even others around you have forgiven you, but you continue to hate yourself and, and to be bitter with yourself and to, to limit yourself for 10 years, 5 years, 20 years. There is no condemnation in Christ. And if you come to him, if you are in him, you have to let it go. You can't hold both worlds. You can't hold him and hate yourself. You can't hold him and salvation and cannot forgive yourself or others. You have to get to that place where you understand that there is no judgment, no condemnation, no argument against those who are in Christ Jesus, whose walk, whose desire, whose aim every day, whose purpose is to walk before the Lord, is to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you always get it right? No. Do we always get it right? No. We mess up. We mess up. All of us. But he is powerful to forgive and to save. And so my friends today, I want to just release you in the power of God. I want to tell you again to breathe. Just, you've built up such, a, such an anxious life. You've been so tensed 
all kinds of aches and pains all over your body and, and you don't even know where they're coming from. You're just tensed with everything. When you make a mistake, oh my God, five years you're still beating yourself over the head for the same mistake you made five years ago, seven years ago, 12 years ago. Come on. If you are in Christ, you have to let it go. He takes your condemnation. Not only does he give us salvation, but he relieves you. He takes it. He exchanges. He takes your condemnation and he gives us a bridge of hope and salvation and peace. And that you will prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So let it go. Forgive yourself, will you? Forgive yourself. You're not the only person who's messed up that way and you won't be the last. I guarantee you. And he's already forgiven you. Are you bigger than God that you can't forgive yourself? Forgive yourself. Self-condemnation is the worst form. Sometimes we develop a Teflon approach to life and, and, and we, we decide I'm not going to be moved by what others say. But your greatest threat sometimes is not others, it's yourself. It's yourself. So today I remind you from the simple verse, one simple verse with a powerful impact that will change your fate and your life. The Lord has not condemned you. So why do you condemn yourself? He's a God of second chances and third chances and as many times as we call on him. He says, none that call on him, he will in any wise cast away. So, you're free. He says, I have not condemned you. He said that to the woman who was caught in the act of adultery. And they brought her before Jesus to be stoned. And Jesus said, okay, let him that is without sin cast the first stone. And as he held his head down and wrote something in the sand, he looked up. He said to the woman, oh, where are your accusers? She said, there is none, Master. Do not be your own accuser and stifle your life and your God-given purpose. Jesus has forgiven you. He's built a bridge of hope, forgiveness, salvation, healing, success, good success for you. So today I invite you to walk into that. For there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Your walk is a spiritual one. It's not about you. It's about the Christ in you. He loves you. He's forgiven you. He's taken away all your condemnation. So walk free. Walk free. Release yourself and just be who God wants you to be. You know, don't limit yourself. Be your best for God. For he's authorized you. He's given you the stamp, the seal of approval to be just that. So I invite you again, breathe, breathe. You're a big mess. You're a hot mess, but so are all of us. We are all hot messes, just doing the best we can, faking it some days, doing the best we can, but we have good intentions to live right and holy. And if maybe you're listening today and you have not yet taken that walk or that step for Christ, you probably think all that I'm saying is just a big blur because you've never met Jesus Christ. Today, I invite you to invite him in your heart and to own that to him, just to say, Lord, I am a big mess. I mess up every day. Like I tell myself I'm not going to do this and I still do it anyway. Like Paul, the good I want to do, I do not. And then the thing I don't want to do is what I do. But would you forgive me today and have mercy and come into my heart and save me by your grace? And maybe if you've said that prayer, whispered that prayer, prayed it along with me in your heart, if that's you, then know for sure that Jesus has already entered your heart. And so you're part of his family. You're part of this fold. And if you are out there and you've been walking this path for 10 years, 40 years, 15 years, five years, maybe even just two months, Wherever you are in him, it doesn't matter. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ, whose aim is just to walk before God and please him. 
He will forgive you. He will brush you off. He will pick you up again when you stumble because he knows that we're not perfect. We are all imperfect human beings trying to serve a perfect God. So he gets it. And that's why he died on the cross for us. So God bless you today. Breathe. Take a breath. It's okay. It's okay. You're not the only one messing up. You're not the only one don't have a clue what you're doing. We all get there. So don't condemn yourself. The Lord has released you. He's lifted you out and he's giving you favor today. So walk in that favor. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for making this your place on Wednesdays at 4.30 Eastern Time. Join me again next week, Wednesday, right here at Karen Althea Ministries Live on Facebook. And if you miss it or so, know someone who misses it because they don't have Facebook, they're not on social media really, uh, maybe they check out YouTube. It's there. We upload the same video so that they will have access to the same word and to be encouraged. We want to be here like a chain link for each other every single week so that you know you're not alone. You're not alone. And like I said, Direct message me if you need to join the healing room on Saturdays at 7 p.m. Or if you'd love to join our Bible study. Informal, simple, easy to follow. Ask any question. There's no stupid question. Just to share with us. Even just your presence. We love it. So DM me if you need a direct message for those who probably are not connecting. Somehow, even in on my Facebook page. Even if you have my WhatsApp. Or even on Karen Althea Psychotherapy. Wherever you find me. Send me a message and I will send you the link if I need to. And if you already know where to find it, havenofhealingministries.com. You can log in on Thursdays at 6.30 for our Bible study and on Saturdays in the healing room at 7 p.m. Thank you so much for being here. Love and blessings. Peace.